Well, hello, everybody, and happy Monday. I do hope your day is going really spectacular as we start the week. You are listening to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. I'm Kathy Holmes, delighted to be your host. And in my Zoom booth today, I have one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. You have listened to her before. She's whispered in your ear as she's taken good care of our animals and our beautiful, beautiful creatures around us. Michelle Jarvis Wanacott is back in the studio with me, and I'm super glad she's here. And she's bought, brought a friend. I have Stacy Edwards Nielsen. I hope I've got that right. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the program, ladies. How are you doing? We're in this very moment. We're great. Yeah, we are in this very moment. In this perfected moment, great. You know, one of the reasons why I love having you on the program so much, Michelle, especially, is that you're just so energized for things. There is a sense of calmness that goes with you, a sense of curiosity that's so much a part of who you are, and what you're best known for is being a dog psychic, actually being able to talk to our animals. You've written a couple of books now. Uh, I don't know if your second one is fully uh, fully out, but the, I know it's almost there. What have you been yeah. doing for the last while? Share, 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 share. What have I been doing for the last while? Well, I've been the past year, I've been um, navigating the a dementia journey with one a family member, my father. I have been building a dream home that I've seen in my mind's eye since I was 28 years old, which we're sitting in right now. Um, I've completed my second book called Grieving Gracefully. We're just putting the cover on it, just waiting for that to come up right now and then putting that out into the world and um, listening as close as I can in amongst living life and all of the things that show up when you have free time, living um in that walking into this 2024 future of being of service, of being at the highest level of service of whatever I'm guided to and whatever the people are showing up for, whether that is I'm working more with people, teaching them how to do what I do rather than doing this one by one by one. Oh, Um, but just that. Yeah. 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 Creating um, a safe space here at this, in this place, which, you know, is one of the most beautiful places in the world just the space, the energy, the land, everything. So um, creating a space for people to be able to come here and to be able to show the, share this wealth of knowledge that I have with them so they can take it into the world and use it in their veterinarian practices and their grooming practices, in their uh, animal behavioral practices, equine uh, services, these kind of things. So yeah. on that precipice of what does it look like to be a higher level of service? while also taking care of self and all the things yeah. and all the people and all the, the that show up. And and that's kind of where Stacy comes into, right? Is because Stacy, mm. you are embarking on a new journey yourself, creating a wonderful new podcast. And, and, my, and to understand it's about self-awareness and self-care. Can you share a little bit about what you have in mind? Yeah, I've just, I'm, have the burning desire to share with people how important they are and how important it is to take care of self. And there's so many different healing modalities out there for physical stuff, spiritual stuff, mental, the whole gamut, right? And how you can take little bits from every different people and bring them into yourself and become a better version of who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And trying and doing new things, you know, I I mean, Michelle, this last year has been like, she's the poster child, for lack of better words, for (laughs) trying new things of what's going on Mm -hmm. in the midst of going through chaos. And now, of course, tis the season to be jolly, but tis the season also for, oh my gosh, chaos, right? Yeah. How can we better look after ourselves and our animals and create these wonderful safe spaces for us to be able to really enjoy where we're where we're at in the moment as opposed yeah. to being so distracted with the many, many things that are constantly going on around us? Yeah, yeah so tis the sur- season to be present. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. That, I mean, and there's the gift. There, there's the gift period. There's Christmas in a in a yeah. in a nutshell is being able to be present for every single thing that's going to show up, like every single thing. We recently had one of our dogs pass in his passing journey in the middle of 
um, Thanksgiving dinner. So in those moments of this is what's happening and this is what's going on in life, to be able to roll in the opportunity to have every single moment be a beautiful experience that you're having rather than a traumatic storm that's that's going on around you. Like just giving yourself the opportunity, like mm -hmm. Stacey was saying earlier, to, 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 to recognize how special you are and how special every moment is and to just stay in it no matter what's showing up. So the, the, yeah. the gift is to be able to be present for yourself through everything and constantly asking yourself, how am I doing right now? How am I feeling right now? What are my emotions right now? Like acknowledging that like you would if you were a little kid. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. It's so important. And we don't do that. We just get outside of our body and we're like, ah, but instead what's going on for me right now? What tools do I have to be able to navigate this? Right. And I think that sometimes we forget to use those tools because we can feel like there's a lot of anxiety that's going on, right? Yeah. And when the anxiety starts to hit us in a way that we we don't even have the time recognize just how deep we are into it. And then we have to step back and go, oh, wait a second. Now here's what calm looks like. And I, I just want to reflect a little bit on your dog passing, right? Because I'm, first of all, my condolences to the family. We know, I know that mm -hmm. your beautiful, beautiful baby is playing with my dogs up in heaven as we speak. I have so, met soul um, tribe, soul tribe. Well, soul tribe, soul tribe. So I'm very confident that Bobby Wilson and Kevin are with you. Um, but you know, I notice right now, again, bringing up the holidays, I notice the change of, it's been a couple of years now since Bobby and Kevin passed. So I'm a little mm -hmm. further down on the journey, but you've been, you've experienced this for years and that grieving process. So many people, you know, they think, okay, well, my, my pet has passed away a couple of years ago. And so I should be over grieving, but in actual fact, it takes a long time to actually fully let go of your pets. And where are you, Michelle, on the process? Because you're walking the walk as you teach it. You're right in the middle of it. So mm -hmm. what does it feel like for you to be ever present in your own environment it, with this happening in your own world? Well, what I know to be true is that I'm never without him. I'm never without any of these. You know, I've got you know, a hundred pictures in our houses of our animals. It's the work I do. It's what I eat, sleep, live and breathe. I know um, in, in all that I am is that we're in almost in continual connection with them. And in finding this time and taking this time in our day to use our tools and to be able to check in with ourselves and recognize how special we are and that we deserve this and finding what calm looks like, I know that I have these opportunities to, to, to hear him or to feel him and, and, and get a glimmer of him walking through the backyard or running with us on a, on a walk. And I know, and I've learned to take that in and take it as real, like take it as, as solid as putting gas into your car. It makes Absolutely. the machine run. Mm -hmm. So those things make this machine keep running. And if I need to have a big old cry, I'm going to have a big old cry and I'm going to thank my dog for for bringing into my awareness this fact that I needed to have a cry for whatever reason. And then I'm gonna ask them like, where are you? Are you around me right now? Is there something that I need to know? Like if you're around, because I'm thinking about you, let's play, let's have fun. I, I literally found myself running through the forest the other day, running down the hill and running in the forest because one of my dogs came in and I, and I said to her, let's play, let's play. So then here I am, like, what would it look like to play with my dogs? I'd probably run with them and have a little fun, call their names. So keeping these relationships going that we can't see, but we certainly can feel them. And sometimes, absolutely, yeah. And sometimes you don't yeah. feel them for a long time and then boom, you feel them again. And we, we look at those feelings and emotions as grief because that's the last conscious experience we had with them was grief. So when we think about them and feel them, we go into that grief place, but my invitation for people, what I've learned is really helpful and tangibly makes a tangible difference is when you feel them coming in and that grief starts to come up to just be like, is my animal around me right now? And what do I need to know? Mm -hmm. What do I need to know? And then you just sit for a moment and you hear the answer faster than you can make it up yourself. 
And sometimes you cry in a place of gratitude rather than a place of loss. And, you know, I'm never going to bring another dog into my life or a cat or a horse. Like it was just too painful. Instead, taking yourself into the place of that was absolutely amazing and beautiful. And I can tap into that energy anytime by just thinking about that. Isn't that really the ability to truly give yourself self-care, Stacey? I'm thinking of you as we, you know, are having this. I mean, to me, I, I believe very wholeheartedly that my girls are around me all the time. I know that they're with me, which does make it a little bit more challenging for me actually to bring another dog in, but for different reasons, not for the other, not, nothing for nothing negative at all, uh, but rather for that positive celebration and that I know that my girls will send me the right mm. new friend. And the one that I need to care for. But yeah. Stacey, what do you think about the self-care component of that awareness that Michelle just spoke of? Pretty self-aware. <laughs> 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 That's the thing is, like you said, it comes in waves. Sometimes you're you're right on the money and you can feel and you can know. And then sometimes you're not. And you have to be able to allow for that grace. But I really like that she is so honed in on her animals and their energy and their their physical bodies because when they're ill or when they're not well if she can sense that that's a huge thing i have a little ability of sensing energy but i think the self-care part of it is just they want us to be happy our pets that have passed they want us to be totally. happy they don't want us to be sad oh no, i'm just gonna they, rush through my yeah, body yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, they're it in the room yes <laughs> But it's wow. so true as they do. They want us to be happy. They want us to, they want us to know that, that they're around and that they care and that they're, they haven't gone very far. They're just on a different dimension right in the moment. Yeah. And exactly. eventually my prayer anyway, none of us really truly know, but my mm -hmm. belief system is that eventually we'll be reunited and won't that be a wonderful day. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, I think about all of those things as being a very positive thing. But I also know, uh, and not to take away from that, but to sort of look at women as a whole, right? I think that women as a whole, you know, we bring around, we talk about the animal tribe or the, but we also have the women tribe, our friends, uh, people we yeah. love and we care yeah. for, right? And and yeah. so, and I'm thinking about, you know, this holiday season, as we started off a little bit earlier, we were talking about, you know, we, we're people sometimes when they are going through, like you did at mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, you know, you've got this urgent matter that requires attention. <laughs> yeah. Women often have this, oh my goodness, we've got this and 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 this. And it becomes really overwhelming, particularly at this time of year when we're wanting to serve our friends and our families. And, you know, we're wanting to be present. We're wanting to play, right? Mm -hmm. what what might that look like what do you think is happening in our universe right now that is that is shifting or is it shifting I think it's shifting I know for myself I've learned to become selfish and mm -hmm. I've learned to take care of or I'm learning <laughs> some days better than others but how important I am and that I I got nothing to give if I'm not taking care of Stacy. and it's like who can I help how can I do that it's like I can't I have to stop. I have to yeah. stop. Mm, so giving yourself permission to stop, to stop Kathy, mm. giving ourselves permission to stop. <laughs> Isn't that the name of your book? Giving yourself permission to grieve is the That's name of one of my books. Yeah. Book. yeah. 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 You know, like grieve for your dog, yeah. like giving but the whole, we, the, the whole giving yourself permission for anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For anything. And we don't yeah. do that as women. We don't no. give ourselves permission. Well, we've been taught to to take care of other people before ourselves. That's yeah. the problem. Well, it is if you if the oxygen mask is empty by the time it yeah. comes around to you. <laughs> I'm having to take like a thousand deep breaths in this conversation. I'm like, and and you know, they're that like breathing, like yeah. take time out to have some deep breaths, ladies. Yeah. Like. Ah, just yeah. breathe. Sit in the car before going into the store. Mm. Three breaths. Yeah. You open the store door, take some breaths. Yeah. You know, yeah. go yeah. to the washroom in between shopping, have some breaths. Yeah. Breathe. Yeah. Breathing is free. 
-hmm. and it and it literally relaxes your parasympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. and sends out information to the animals and the people around you that everything's okay yeah. that breath that breathing that parasympathetic nervous system stim being stimulated and it changes everything so the very least mm -hmm and self-care is remembering to yeah. breathe because mm -hmm. every answer I've ever gotten in my life is behind breathing and asking, what do I need to know right now? Mm -hmm. Like, and breathing, just this breathing. And then, then the information has a place to land. Otherwise mm -hmm. we're just dog paddling yeah. in our own pool, <laughs> going in yeah. circles. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I find thing, dog right? handling in my own pool. I feel, I find that for myself when I'm in that space of not breathing, it's, I'm, I'm actually at that, you know, my nose is just touching the, if I were, if I were a four-legged animal, it would be just the tip of my nose. Sometimes that feels like it's at that place to breathe. And then all the rest of me is like underneath the water, frantically swimming away trying to keep it all together and I think that a lot of women experience that right and especially yeah. when there's a lot happening when there's an abundance of things happening and so if we're not able to take a yeah. breath step back and take a look at things then we can really find ourselves having some issue um, but I also want to say that it's important that we manifestate those wonderful things that come to us and I yeah. really want to yeah. let's talk about a little bit about what manifestation looks like I cannot tell you how thrilled I am that you finally got the house of your dreams mm -hmm. and all the stuff that went <laughs> with that. It's just yeah. like snap, snap, yeah. snap, snap fingers. Mm -hmm. Like congratulations on all of that. Tell us a little bit about that process. How nerve wracking and fabulously wonderful was that? Well, first of all, <laughs> everything in life, um, there's, there's two first of all, so there's a 10 first of alls. Right. Everything in life has yin yang. Everything has light and dark. Right. Mm -hmm. So so even though um, sometimes I'm like singing in the forest with the most amazing amount of gratitude to my angels, my guides, my friends, my family members on the other side saying, I know that you're involved in this. I know you're helping me. I know you're helping me bring this in. There's also times where there's the opposite of that, where you're just like, holy cow, why is this happening? What's going on? Oh, my God. Like with everything, because yeah. that's that's just that's the roller coaster of life. It's why we go to a fair and go on a roller coaster. Like but life is a roller coaster, right? It's why we go to ayahuasca journeys in, in the, um, in the rainforest is like to go on that journey, right? Well, I think life is a roller coaster and an ayahuasca journey and just being present for it is so important. And so with manifestation, what I understand to be true and coming from that dog paddling place of dragging myself forward through absolute mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical darkness, my whole life, just getting to those places that like, I, there was some light. I was like, okay, there's some hope. This feels good. This feels right. This feels good. I'm going to follow this. I'm going to move with this. So for, for human beings and women with manifestation, it's absolutely imperative for us to understand what our yes feels like and what our no feels like. Because we can think things are really good for us and really important for us. But if they're not for our highest good and greatest joy, we can be calling these things in and just banging right into the, a, a wall with spikes is what I'm, the image I'm getting, right? And you don't want that. You want to just be able to have that, a, a littler roller coaster ride in life. And, <laughs> and, and with, with the manifestation, there's these moments where I'm like, this is the most beautiful experience in the whole entire world. I've seen this since I was 28 years old. Um, I know that all the animals that I promised that I get land for one day, I know that their souls have returned. I know that my dogs that I've crates in the back, in the back room right now, I know they're the same souls that I've been promising all along that I would do this for them. So there's all of these different elements to, to manifestation that if we allow things to happen for us, that's for our highest good and greatest joy and for us to be of service to self first and then other people, then things in life starting working in our favor. And that is just the law of science. Like in quantum physics, it is proven that when you put your thought on something, form is created, matter is created. So we have to watch our thoughts and our fears. And like what I was saying to Stacy earlier, when I let go of my big old fantastic dog training company and started moving into animal communication, which is invisible yet tangible. I asked myself, how am I supposed to do this? And I heard replace fear with curiosity. 
So in this manifestation thing, if we can be curious about what's meant for us Mm -hmm. and hold the image and keep going towards that rather than driving right all the time Mm -hmm. when we're supposed to be going left and knowing what it feels like for you, like those yeses and nos, that things will work out for you. And anybody, if I could create it, anyone in the world, I believe, can create it. Like we have the ability to call in what's for our highest good um, and step outside of that darkness and that pain that was us before this. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? With that person that was us, unwrapping all of that stuff, the conditioning, the pain, all of these things that we think we are and think we deserve and think, and then come over here and just allow beauty to happen. Like allow beauty to happen in your life. So important because we're so rushing and we're so hustled that if we don't have these little pockets of joy, we can't manifest anything. Like think about little kids with um, um, one of those Legos in their pockets. I'm just going to fill my (laughs) pockets full of Legos. And then one day I can take them all out. And when I have some quiet time and I can build something. Yeah, maybe exactly. that's what we're doing with manifesting. We're filling our pockets full of love and joy and gratitude. So when we have some time, we can sit back and build that into a house, a home, a career, a, a love, um, friendship, gratitude, whatever you're looking for in your life as far as manifestation goes. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> makes absolutely perfect sense. I step on a lot of Legos on a regular basis and I'm pretty good with picking them up and popping them in my pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it does, it is very true that we are manifesting anything is, you know, one moment, one thought, one adventure at a time. And so thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. It can't all come at once. Your head would explode. can't all come at once. Yeah. yeah. Well, and most of the time we don't know what to do with it when it does come. Right. Oh, yeah. Like it could be, you know, opportunity happens to all of us several times a day, which we choose to act on and which we choose not to is circumstance of the day. So it's, you never just really know how things are going to come un- unravel. Um, and I'm constantly surprised by the people I talk to, constantly curious about what's going to happen. And I get it wrong more often than not. And that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, because you know what I'm saying? It's that's like, I love, love the fact that, that I get yeah. it wrong. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. almost every time I am surprised by something wonderful that comes out of it. Yes. Something I didn't expect. You know what I'm saying? That is, that's everything. <laughs> It's the journey. It's all of the stuff in the middle. Like when I published my first book, I was like, oh, okay. And that was like a 10 year journey, eight year journey of like, da, 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 da. When I stood in front of this house um, for the first time I stood in there, I was like, oh, I have no attachment to this. That's interesting. Cause it was the journey. It was everything in the middle. Yeah. Well, and it's the middle the of where all the good stuff is. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Stacey. Sorry. And I was just going to say, and then you get what you have and it's like, it's great, but it could be anywhere. It's not really the essence of the house I'm looking for. It's the feeling that I feel when I'm in the house that I'm looking for. Right. <laughs> Which is what happens when I go shopping in some places. In truth, right? I walk in, I see something and I've created the story I've told myself is that I'm going to have this bunch of people over for dinner or I'm going to have this like you create this wonderful wonderful story and then you're there and you go how did I get there holy mackerel like the feeling we're 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 I think we're we're often looking for memories Mm -hmm. at every turn how can I take this forward with me you know what I'm saying I I love that like create memories rather than things Mm. Well, we, I think that, I think for self-care, you know, it's memories that are, that, that help you when things are not 
going as well as you'd like them to go right it's you can look back on some of the things uh, that brought you joy simple things that bring you joy I mean I I I'm curious actually because Stacey I don't know you very well uh I met you just you know in this interview for the first time I'm I know it won't be the last time I will meet you (laughs) I know it won't I'm already manifesting that you get it yeah Uh, and so just just in saying that I'm curious you know what are some of those things that bring you the most joy? Oh, well, two things. I was just thinking that when you said that, that I have chosen in the last six years since I was separated from my partner, my husband, that I would not buy my kids things anymore. I would only buy them experiences. <gasps> so at Christmas time, they get the normal stocking goodies, but we go to the ski mountain for a couple of days or we go camping for we find an experience that I want to share with them because my kids will remember that forever. Oh my so, god, I love that. That's yeah. Beautiful. So I thought that I was really I good. love that. Yeah. And that's what brings me joy is when my kids are all of a sudden smiling and happy, right? <laughs> I'm happy. And sometimes it doesn't have to cost a bunch of money. Like it's yeah. a real, it can be real simple little things that they like to do that you can, it doesn't have to be big things. And that's what's so beautiful. They just want you. Yeah. Your Christmas present is us. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. yeah. It's Skiing us being together. Thing. It's sharing time. Yeah. I, and trust me, I'm a grandma now of four. My fourth Ooh. grandchild is on the way. I'm so wow. excited. Yeah. Um, do in January that, but oh. Uh, but my family, they don't want stuff. They couldn't care less about stuff. They mm-hmm. want togetherness. They want yes. they want they want their kids to understand, especially these days. I mean, the economy mm-hmm. is not in a great place. People mm-hmm. are struggling all over the place. Yeah. You know, I, I'm curious of whether or not we can offer some guidance to people that are really having a hard time right now. How can yeah. we keep finding that joy? What does that look like? Yeah. And what if we give ourselves permission to change Christmas? Ooh. Yes. Like it it, will why allow it, it to be whatever it is. A way or a certain yeah. tradition or a yeah. certain, why, why can't we just <clears throat> make it more experiential? And, and this yeah. is what I've been asking um, my family for years as well. Like, cause we're talking about this. What do you enjoy for Christmas? And I have a new sister in the past year or two. I gained a, a new sister as well from 23 and me. Um, I got a sister. I think that's mom. amazing, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's so I know your cool. mom, and mom mentioned it to me, and she was telling me yeah. recently that she was so delighted. And so, yeah, no, yeah. very congratulations. I haven't talked Thanks. to you since she's that bad. time, she's but just, she's just like me. <laughs> she's she's so awesome. Fab. It's great. I have like that. Member. That's true. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful, and and yeah. a, a, of course. Um, I love every single one of my family members and, 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 and getting to sit and talk with uh, my new sister, my big sister, asking her, what is you, what are your favorite memories? And it's what we're talking about. It's the experience. It's the time together. It's the camaraderie. It's the conversations. It's the ridiculousness that shows up. It's like, you know, running to the bathroom, peeing your pants. It's like those things that are, are make Christmas what it is. It's yeah. not the presents but, and the gifts no. and the, all the food yeah. and all of the stuff. It's like, yeah it's the snacks and the talking and the ribbing and the, it's, that's what it is. And I feel that if we started to talk about that, maybe on social media, maybe we need to talk about that. Like, let's change Christmas. Yeah. Like, let's make it about experience because nobody like, and it, okay. I was going to say, unless you're really, really well off, but then you can buy whatever you want anyways at any time. Yeah. So like nobody needs yeah. more things. Yeah. We need more us mm. specifically after COVID because it didn't yeah. particularly make people closer. No, no. Which I thought no. it would. It made people kind of more uh, distant. So let's get together with our families and our friends, people that we love and enjoy mm. and share time. Yeah. And that's the gift the the, the the box is a picture of yourself in there. Here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to share me with you today. Yeah. Like we're going to, yeah. we're just going to, whatever. Yeah. We're going to, whatever. <laughs> what I think change Christmas. Yeah. I, I think that being in the, whatever, just being around um, people that you care for is the greatest healing thought. It's the greatest, all of it. I'm going to take a quick station identification. I've got so many more questions for you. So I'm just, I'm so delighted that you're both here. Thank you for being here. 
If you have just tuned in to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM, we are delighted that you're here. Thank you again for tuning in. I do think it's a really groovy idea for you to go grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen, this perfect opportunity. Michelle uh, has got some groovy stuff that she's doing where in her animal communications. We'd love to be able to share that with you, share her information. And Stacy is starting off on a new adventure herself with a podcast. So, you know, as that goes along, we love to be able to make sure that our listeners maybe check out some of the stuff that she's going to be coming up with in the next little bit. But this conversation is also about what's happening right now in our community. We know for certain that there's a whole lot of need out there. Our recent pit count in Nanaimo and on Vancouver Island as a collective, a meaning point in time count of the unhoused uh, those that are struggling with mental health and addiction, there's a lot of need for people in our community. There's a lot of families right now that are maybe not on the street, but they're on the brink of having some challenges. And so anywhere that you see things where there's a toy run or whether there's the loaves and fishes food bank or whether Salvation Army kettles inspire you or whether it's us here at CHLY 101.7, there's a place to give and we do hope that you will take the time to choose whichever one means the most to you and give it away whatever you can. Um, I am also really excited to say that Shaw is no longer Shaw. So my program Act 3 on Shaw Television will soon be my Act 3 show on Rogers. So I look forward to becoming part of the Rogers family with Act 3. We are going into filming again, actually this week. So a new episode will be up for you very, very soon. Be, please be watching for it. It'll be on Channel 4 or Channel 150. Of course, you can always watch our program on YouTube, on iHeartRadio, and on Spotify. Thanks again for tuning in to Act 3. We are really, really glad that you do. And now back to my amazing guests, Michelle jarvis Wanicut and Stacey Edwards-Nielsen are with me. Ah, we've got, oh, and we have the bells. We have the bells. Yeah, go ahead and yeah. ring a bell. Yeah, there you go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> um, oh, um, I, I, I gotta say, Kathy, my head got tingly when you started talking about um, this new energy, this new with Rogers, like my head got, and that's my yes answer. When, when I like, when something's just like, yes, this was working. This is good. This is mm. right. Like that. Yeah. Tingle, that's tingle. exciting. So that's I feel exciting. that for you, there, there's something mm, very right, whatever that is like, it's not, yeah, very right coming energetically from that shift and that change. So well, that's I'm all really ha I'm, I have to say, I'm happy to hear that. And I know ch no change is always interesting because you never know what's going to happen from it, but it's certain change is a hundred percent certain. Yes. And mm -hmm. therefore I embrace it. And I love it because I know that uh, every single time, sometimes it's true. Change isn't always good, right? Sometimes it can be very painful, but yeah. usually yeah. it leads us to something mm -hmm. bigger or better than we could have ever anticipated yes. before. And so Specifically, if you're noticing yeah. that yes. in life with yeah. along by the manifestation, noticing like, okay, yeah, I've noticed that this came out of this and this came out of that and this came out of that. Like, you know, to notice that is where you can receive more and more and more. Noticing is really important. So, and, and noticing really is a discipline, I think. <laughs> it's being present. Discipline. You have to make yourself be present in every yeah. second, really, in order to notice. Because you know when you're not noticing or you're not in your body because you trip over stuff, you walk in the walls mm. and you do things because you're so busy doing and you're here and you're not here at all. So it's the getting, that's when you're saying what brings you joy? Teaching people how to get into their bodies. What a great way. Yes. People over the Christmas season is really learning to ground. Chris, Michelle Helen did one, one of these, a, a crystal. It just helps you get into your body. You can do a meditation. Yeah. You can stamp your feet. You can pinch your fingers together. You can do anything that's going to help you breathing. It's just the, the, the bringing you back into your physical body so you can get out of your brain and into your heart and leave from there. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm very glad that you brought that up because I really, I'm a great believer that our bodies talk to us. And I know that so many of us deal with autoimmune deficiencies or we have, you know, recognized and unrecognized challenges that are going on dementia 
is, you know, happening in your father's uh, situation, which is my heart is with you on that because that's, there's no, no control over what's happening to his body. That's something mm -hmm. that's beyond, but, yeah. but what's beautiful about it is that when the people that we love are in the middle of something really challenging, if we're present in our body, then that positive energy and healing energy that comes from that radiates into those that we love. Yeah. I can only imagine, Michelle, that you're like radiating all over constantly. your family constantly yeah. right now. And yeah. isn't isn't that a little bit of Reiki in itself is sending that yes, physical, you know yeah. what I mean? That energy yeah. Yeah. to Sending worry does not help. <laughs> Sending worry and yeah. grief and stress, it yeah. doesn't help anything. It's yeah. so tangible to whoever you're thinking about. Like it's, the, it, they might not recognize it's tangible, but they just might be like, what's wrong with me right now? Uh, and it's that somebody else is thinking about you. And so it's so important for us if we're experiencing some kind of um, discordant experience with family members that you don't want to be happening, but it's, it's there, it's happening as, as such as life. And the beauty and the pain and the glory of life is to be able to step back and take that worry away and throw it away and then bring something else up in your love, which is love and compassion and ask, yes. may this person be surrounded by um, the, the feeling of peace. That's what I ask for yes. a lot. No matter what yeah. this person's navigating, mm -hmm. may they just feel peace, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It's a simple, easy thing to send. And then you feel it because as you're talking and as science has proven, Everything worth thinking about somebody else, your body's experiencing, yeah. your body's yeah. responding to. So for like, I'm so worried about my father mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, instead I'm like, my father has chosen such a beautiful, brave experience in his yeah. senior years to navigate. Mm -hmm. And he, we have all come to such a high level of compassion that none of us even knew that we were Capable. were capable of yeah. and right. we have all done screaming yeah. and yelling in the car <laughs> and praying for our own sanity within it our own calm our own calm right and and it, there's so many gifts to every experience even if you're you're in that that dark dark place and like we're talking on the other side of it in that dark place I've looked over at times and been in a dark place and looked over. And a, I remember as clear as day, a lady on the side of the street smiled at me and I started to cry because I send that energy out to everybody all the time. And here I was completely depleted through yeah. all of this and looking over and someone smiled at me and it filled like she was sending me mm -hmm. peace. Yeah. Right. Like it's so important for us to, like with all of the stuff that's going on in the world mm -hmm. to stop our own, or sorry, to interrupt yeah. our own inner turmoil yeah. and take a deep breath. Inner turmoil is human. We're going to do it. So just interrupt it, take the breath or the self-care, whatever our tools are and be like, I'm just going to light a little candle. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to send some peace. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to imagine them surrounded in pink light or call in God, who may have call in my grandma, whatever it is you believe in changing the energy around it and sending that and boy, oh boy, that's a, it's a noticeable difference. Absolutely. It's a noticeable difference. Yeah. I know I've experienced it myself when you turn it around, but even just being a gift to other people by saying kind things, when you're standing in line with someone admiring the work that somebody is doing in the day, you know, retailers right now, I've got a lot on their plate. Yeah. These stores are, sh I mean, in all fairness, granted, yes, we want to give experiences at Christmas time to our families, but there's still the shoppers that are out there. I'm a shopper I, I, yeah. I love my love language is gifting people whether i make it or buy it i love yeah, it nice. I, <laughs> thank you i I, lo I love it it makes me happy yeah. it brings me joy but what also brings me joy is being in the grocery lineup or in the um, store lineup and saying to the person that's done an exceptional job yes. you were really great and you yes. are good at your job and thank yeah. you so much for being with me today and i really appreciate i know that you're so busy right now like just noticing can take somebody from being on the brink of just feeling yeah. the disaster to yeah. suddenly going Oh my gosh, I have light now. I feel good. I can get through yep. this. Shit. 
I can and you get... just changed that energy for everybody that heard it as well. Right. right. And, and everybody that comes through her line for the next hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's a ripple effect of giving kindness to people and looking them in the eye and, and genuinely being kind. If it's just making a comment about their hair, their eyes, just being nice to people. It's yeah. like, we're so busy in our heads and doing the lists and the to do's. And it's just like, you might not even get there. You're just Absolutely. at the grocery store. You don't know you're getting home. So yeah. be at the grocery store. Mm. Be with the teller. Be with your kids. Oh, I like that you said you you might not even be getting home. Like what what, uh, what is our last moment? Like what do you want your last moment to look like? This, fingering somebody in the lineup or <laughs> or just sending peace and love and talking to the person behind you. Yeah. Having a good right? conversation about their pink shoes or or yeah. whatever. Like just change the dynamic of mm. what you're thinking and feeling. But it's and it's behind that breath, right? And that mm. choice. Mm feeling frustrated right now, acknowledging that I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling frustrated for a bunch of reasons. And, and I haven't, you know, haven't ate, haven't drank, haven't uh, 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 line up, line up, line up and <laughs> breath, 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 mm. breath. And where can I find a little light here and spread a little light? Mm. And, it, and it changes things for you. It's Absolutely. a gift to yourself it immediately is, yeah. by being kind. It most certainly is. And then if people aren't kind back, I often just have a, I laugh back to myself. Like if I'm like, <laughs> you know sending out love and the person's like Meh. i'm like i just have a little laugh because you and you also never know what that person's experiencing it can no. be horrible and they're yeah. out having to grocery shop yeah Still well it takes food and it, toilet paper. it takes me back to a little bit earlier when we were talking a little bit of, we didn't use this word but i'm going to use it now that mind reading that expectation of what you think is going to have happen we're mind reading mind reading and none of us really have that power to be able Why? to know what <laughs> you're, you're, you're one of the few people speaking of mind reading I wanna, I've, I've noticed uh lately and i want to share that i, I really want to get this out in today's uh conversation is that i've noticed that you've changed your work a little bit and it's there's mm. a little there's a new art component oh. and all mm. i can feel are colors and colors and colors so when of course when i see it run across my facebook and i see the dog or the creature whatever it might may not be a dog that you're drawing and then all of these lights I mean I just keep resonating with this lovely beautiful color and Thanks. positive energy that's radiating out of these great shots tell us a little bit about what has motivated thank you to do that you. well I it's didn't cool. know I, thank you I think it's amazing because I had no idea I was an artist zero like no, actually the opposite where I would chastise myself for, you know, having a level grade two art <laughs> abilities, right? <laughs> um, but I took an art class with this woman named Uti, who I actually use her cards to do readings with. She's one of the people that I work with her energy. Um, I did a course and it just unlocked this ability. And, I, and literally when I was in the class, I threw a bunch of art away and I admitted to it. And she said, you go in the garbage and you bring that art out. And I brought the art out. And it was like full Dr. Seuss, just not adult the art at all. <laughs> and she said, work with that. And she taught me how to recreate. So she taught me no matter what is on the page, you can change it. So this isn't like, unless yes. if you're looking at it and you're like, Grr, then get <laughs> curious about it and be like, I wonder what I can change this into. Like this, this goes into our whole conversation. Right. Yeah. So when I do my animal communication services as a global animal communicator, people send me photos of the animals that I'm working with and a list of questions. So afterwards, in order to come down, because I'm really high and dizzy and not well after a reading, it takes a lot out of you to do, to change your, the, the how you're using your brain, right? From just like that to, that to this, to like honing into a whole different level of information. So afterwards, I just started stick people drawing what I was seeing. And then they turned into these over a very short period of time, turned into these elaborate drawings that where I am able to be like, Oh, he wants this to be blue because blue is the color of throat chakra and the ears need to be green because that's the color of heart. And this dog wants flowers in her ears or this dog wants the, the world's biggest mohawk, but it's all energy coming off of them. It's that's my most recent one. Holy moly. Like just that energy spiking out of the head because animals are so much more than we could ever imagine. And I feel that when we're tapping into them, they're showing us something that we have been missing of them as this spiritual being yes 
right? So when I do the art, I get to see their spiritual being side. And I, and I, and I allow the judgment of, well, their eyes are too close and it, maybe it doesn't really look like them. I allow that all to go because it's what they're showing me that they want to show they're human. And it's just, I could be there for like an hour. I could be there for half an hour. I've been there for two hours doing these beautiful pictures and it's so creative and it's a way better way to spend my time than scrolling on the internet or watching television <laughs> or the things we normally do, like being creative and that creativity might go nowhere or I might be end, end up being a, a world's famous artist or at the very least, the one lady that phoned me and said, can I please use this for my wedding? And I was like, absolutely. Is there some of the advertising? And another lady, you know, her dog had passed and asking like, I've, I've worked with professional artists and they get my child child's art and they're like, I just framed your piece of art and put it with like my world famous art stuff. I'm like, nice. oh, because it's the feeling that's coming out of this picture through the animals that helps us to see the animals a little bit more clear and what I heard today fits in with this the dogs cats horses all the animals in the world they're the gurus we're looking for uh -huh. they're right in front of us whether Absolutely. it's a fly in the window I saw on here earlier <laughs> or whether it's your your beloved animal that shares a bed with you like it's there's they're they're trying to teach us something they're offering us an experience and it's about whatever you're ready for and open to so the art has just become this creative outlet for me that has become this beautiful part of the readings and the experience it's incredible and I might do a children's book with that art one day. I'm thinking that you might be the artist for my child's book. Remember with Ooh, Bobby I Wilson, I wanted to do my, uh, I wanted to share the story of Bobby Wilson, who was a, an escape artist and would take five hours. Once she got out of the fence, she'd take her five hours to get her back. And my, one, my favorite memory of my Bobby Wilson was uh, someone had tried to break into my house and I was very new on living here. So I just moved over. I, my, I, you know, have never, and thanks be to God, since I haven't had anybody step over that fence line, but be that somebody had tried to undo the gate and they left the gate open. So at five o'clock in the morning, I'm wearing bright red Christmas pajamas, chasing my dog down the street, down the center of the meridian in my red pajamas, chasing my little white dog, Bobby Wilson, who Michelle knows very well. And running and running and running and running and running and running. And then she oh, went across yeah. to McDonald's and then she went from McDonald's to the church. Oh. Then she went from the church down to this other person's house. Then she went from the other person's house. She made it all the way down with several stops along the way, several people stopping along the way as I'm running after her in my bright red pajamas. And our and fear pushes them too. Mm -hmm. fear pushes yeah. them. And, pushes and, them away. And she cornered herself thanks thank you thank you thank you jesus mm -hmm. she cornered herself in somebody's yard where she couldn't get out because by then i was pooped and she was about to get on the ferry oh she my was right <laughs> down at the ferry terminal at the last house before wow. you get onto the terminal and i i mean just saying so i yeah. have always wanted to write my grandchildren a, a ch children's drama so you might just very well be, be i'd be happy um, to do that that'd be the best yeah. thing ever see yeah. and this is the thing you don't know yeah. when you step outside of your comfort zone and just, just allow yourself out. to be a little bit brave and have a little bit of fun suddenly yeah. you can be the, doing the art for your friends you know yeah. it's fabulous story yeah. you Fair just enough. have to give ourselves permission to be creative yeah um give ourselves that time to mm -hmm. self-care give ourselves the time to calm down. Like you said um, something to the effect of here's what calm looks like. Like mm -hmm. does half of the women in the world even know what calm looks, looks like? like, right? And and not even just the women of the world not knowing what calm looks like. I mean, at the end of the day, we are so, we, we I think that COVID forced us to slow down. Mm -hmm. I think nature came back to norm. I think we started seeing the deers come back and the animals come down from the woods and there was a, a gentle quietness that mm. happened. I did not see that quietness from where I was sitting because of the work that I do kept me busy through the whole time yes. and helping to support, yeah. uh, to support people. As many people did, not everybody had a COVID vacation. Very few mm. in actual fact really did. Um, 
but to to just sort of see how you know we have an interruption i love that word in, an interruption mm -hmm. uh and then to see what happens in the middle of that interruption how we can how we can use it to our good and we shift and shift again so i agree i think i think 2024 is going to be a year of shifting and um and i'm excited to see like living to your highest potential. Yeah. Not yes. highest, but that's just pressure, small. but yeah. a higher potential. Yeah. Like allowing yeah. yourself, giving yourself permission to be brave enough to step outside of your comfort zone and just do something that might be a little bit bigger than you imagine and allowing the, the people that are looking for whatever it is you're offering to show up because they're looking. There's people that are looking for pe for the gifts yeah. that people have. Right. And I do, I, I want to say, I agree with you. And I also want to just like preface it a little bit by saying that not everybody is looking to have you know it's not about uh success or a measurement of success or anything like that it could be something so simple is stacy as your you know what you were talking about earlier is like giving yourself permission for that self-care self-care might mean mm. that for the first time ever you say no oh, to somebody which is a complete oh. sentence right really? it is a complete right sentence apparently yes yeah. yeah without it without um the story behind yeah. it that's yeah yes trying to justify saying, no. mm, that would be a nice thing <laughs> right and, and no. isn't that success just in that absolutely it is so yes yeah i i think it's a we're in such a great opportunity to to learn so much and i think that the magic that you bring to the table michelle is just so extraordinary i told people to go get a piece of paper and a pen halfway through how can people find you animalpsychic.ca um is my website animal psychic on instagram and michelle jarvis wanacott on facebook michelle has one l and wanacott is w-o-n-n-a-c-o-t-t -T. And I also believe that if you're meant to find me, you're going to find me. I agree. Someone and will tell you. Someone will say, have you heard of that Michelle girl or read the book? Yeah. 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 You, we show up. up. Yes, yeah. we show up. And the people that need to get a, to us, whoever our us is, are, the, the metaphysicians that we are, <laughs> um, they're, they're going to find us. So when we were talking earlier about how do you get that? Like, how do you get the proper social media out there to reach the people that are looking for you? Um, and maybe people that work on, on the, the level that we're working on, it, it's about the people that are looking for us. So speaking our authentic, authentic language, so people can recognize that, find comfort in it, and then be able to reach out to us for whatever it is we bring to the table, right? Remaining authentic. And, and all of this, the finding your calm, the self-care, giving yourself permission, saying no, doing the deep breaths, um, having time with um, gifting to your community, your energy and your time, or gifting your time with your family rather than uh, uh, breaking yourself economically over Christmas time. Mm -hmm. All of this makes our lives so much better so we can hear and feel what we're supposed to be doing next, what who we're supposed to be working with who we're supposed to be talking to like whatever is supposed to be unfolding in our lives so we have to give ourselves permission to hear all the things we've been talking about in this podcast and put it together into action for self yeah. for yeah. self we are so important 2024 is about people coming from a loving place from their self first as they wake up in the morning and taking that out into the world and seeing what comes from that bottom line you know where i i i i love that we can have these conversations i feel blessed in every way that the three of us can be together today and that who's ever listening to our show mm -hmm. really can can drive along or walk along their day and that they'll take they'll have their takeaway and feel good about giving themselves permission to do something which leads me to sort of the last bit is that our time is just about up here on the program and of course i always want the life lesson and the wisdom but i think you kind of all already just gave it Ooh, but i yeah. do have one last piece the one last one because i know that you're you know you're you, you've moved into your beautiful new home how are the dogs liking their new digs they've never been happier yeah 
they I have mean, a, they, they're, they're like the same thing as me. There's a sense of freedom. Yeah. They're like, right? I'm loving this mom. Thank you for this. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's what comes through me. It's not the property. It's what comes through me yeah. that translates to them that this is where we're supposed to be. And this is amazing. So finding where you're supposed to be in life, whatever that is, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, your health, location, whatever that is, mm -hmm. like find where you're supposed to be this year because it, your animals will feel it. Your family members will feel it. Your friends will feel it. Everything changes from that. Yeah. Finding where you're supposed to be and the answers. That's where you, the, the answers come from as well. Right. The answers that we're looking for are reach out to all the whole world to find these answers. And they're right here. Just need to give yourself that permission to, to be and to hear. And to be well, kind in the, the process, world. right. To stay kind, stay present, stay kind in the process. Stay kind. Yeah. Uh, this morning, stay kind. I wanted to tell you one thing. We were talking this morning about a practice in the morning. And it was like, how do you best take care of yourself? I need to do yoga. I need to meditate. I need to have good conversation. I need to exercise. Those are the things I need to eat well. Those are the five things I need in order to set myself up for success in my day. So it's figuring out what those five things are for you and then working at implementing them into your life a little bit at a time and stop judging yourself when you don't. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, yes. Stacey, <laughs> is there a way that people can reach you for some support and service or have you got a website yet? I know you're in the beginning. <laughs> then no, the good I'm news is mean. you be you. And the good news <laughs> is as your podcast starts to develop or whatever, we'll put a link into the, into the, oh, yeah. uh, you, the into the box on YouTube and uh, we'll be able to share your information. And of course, I look forward to you being a guest again in the future. Thank you. Thank I you like both that. for being here, Stacy, Michelle. It was a pleasure to see your wonderful faces. I know in the radio, they're only getting to hear your wonderful mm -hmm. voices, but of course I get the benefit of all of the good stuff of seeing you. And, and I hope our, our, our listeners will tune in to this on YouTube as well, so they can meet you the way I have gotten to meet you over this time. Mm -hmm. Thanks nice. again for being here, Thank everybody. You. Hey, you know what? I love you so much. And I am so glad that your day started, hopefully, with a little bit of inspiration from my two friends. Mm -hmm. Have yourself a wonderful day, everybody. And we'll see you in the next time on Act 3.